to the Thursday, June 17th, 2021 meeting of the Transportation Planning Policy Committee meeting of Current Council of Governments. Um, we are going to start the meeting with our roll call. Um, we have folks that are here in person. We also have folks that have called in as well. And so I'll ask Ms. Napier if she can please call the roll. Oh, excuse me. Did I, did I miss this? I'm, pardon me, I missed the Pledge of Allegiance. That's right before roll call. So let's go ahead and do the pledge. Everybody stand, then we'll go to roll call. Thank you. Salute pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, thank you. Now, Ms. Napier, if you could please call the roll. Thank you. Uh, Trujillo. Present. Bob Smith. Lisinovich. Present. Vasquez. Vasquez. Albright. Here. Gonzalez. Gonzalez. Blades. Prout? Here. Cryer? Here. Phil Smith? Present. Reyna? Present. Couch? Here. Scrivener? Here. Para? I am here. Kiersey? Here. Alcala? Here. Navarro? Here. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Napier. So next item on the agenda is public comments. This portion of the meeting is reserved for persons to address the council on any matter not on this agenda, but under the jurisdiction of the council. Council members may respond briefly to statements made or questions posed. So um, any speakers, they're limited to two minutes. And we ask that you please state your name and address for the record prior to making a presentation. Do we have any public comments? Okay, I'm not seeing anyone here and I don't hear any online. And so we'll then move on to item number three. That's our consent agenda. All items on the consent agenda are considered to be routine and non-controversial by Kerncog staff and will be approved by one motion if no member of the council or public wishes to comment or ask questions. If comment or discussion is desired by anyone, the item will be removed from the consent agenda and will be considered in the listed sequence with the opportunity for any member of the public to address the council concerning the item before action is taken. And so do we have any questions or comments from either the public or any board members on our consent items A through E? If not, I'll entertain a motion. I second. We got a, a motion from Cryer and a second from Para, is that correct? Trujillo. I'm sorry, who said, oh, I'm sorry, excuse me, from Trujillo. Roll call vote. Lisinovich. Yes. Cryer. P. Smith. Phil Smith. Raina. Albright. Okay. Albright. Aye. Prout. Yes. Scrivener. Aye. Couch. Yes. Trujillo. Yes. Para. Yes. 
Navarro? Yes. And Kersey? Yes. All right, thank you. Did you get Silsman? Yes. Yes, I did. Very thank good. Thank you. Is there anyone else that we might have missed? Okay, hearing none, then we'll move on to item number four. This is public review and delegated approval draft 2021 air quality conformity analysis for the 2021 Federal Transportation Improvement Program and the 2018 Regional Transportation Plan. So who will be the staff member that's going to make comment on this? Mr. Liu. Mr. Liu. Mr. Liu, please proceed. Uh, this is Vincent Liu from Kerncock. Good evening, Chairman of Committee, member agencies, and the community, uh, committee members. Uh, this conformity update covers the anticipated availability of new transportation conformity budgets in the moderate area 2016 PM 2.5 plan and the 2018 PM 2.5 plan. They are currently undergoing EPA review. This is being processed as a value-wide conformity redetermination. The draft documentation was circulated to the TTAC meeting via email on June 1st, 2021 and it's available at KernCog website. The public review period began June 2nd, 2021 and ends July 2nd, 2021. At today's KernCog board meeting, a, pub, a public hearing will be held and the KernCog staff will request dedicated authority from KernCog board authorizing KernCog's executive director to approve the conformity analysis. We are resolution upon the close of public comment period and the review of all comments. A summary of public com comments received will be in incorporated into the final documentation as appropriate. It's, a, it's an action item. Uh, first, open the public hearing, take public comment and close public hearing. Second, approve delegated authority for current car executive director to approve the 2021 conformity analysis and sign resolution number 2115. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So right now I'll go ahead and open the public hearing and ask if there are any public comments, either here in the chambers or online. Okay, I'm hearing none. I'll go ahead and close the public hearing and now we'll ask for an action to approve. We just need a motion. So moved. Couch, second. Was couch? Yes. Second. Couch and Lucinovich. Okay, motion couch, second Lucinovich. Roll call vote, please. It, you can just oh, I can a do a voice vote. vote? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Do we have Aye. any do we have Aye. any opposed? Aye. Okay, I heard an aye. That was was, was someone opposed? <laughs> I think it was an aye. It was a little late coming in. Yeah, okay. I was just late uh, turning my microphone on. This is Raina. <laughs> okay, thank you, Raina. Thank you, sir. Okay, so I didn't hear any opposed. So motion carries. Thank you. Then we'll move on now to item number five. Um, do we have any board members that have any um, any reports on any meetings or any comments? Okay, hearing none. Then we'll move on then to item six, our Caltrans report. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I guess I kind of feel the need to reintroduce myself. First time coming in person in about 15 months, I think, pre-COVID. So uh, Michael Navarro, Deputy District Director for District 6 Planning and Local Assistance. Pleasure to be here with you all in person. Um, as you can see, since I'm here in person, we're kind of transitioning to our post-COVID uh, work environment. We still plan on teleworking. We'll have people in the office doing split shifts, doing a couple of days a week in the office. Um, but you, you'll see me coming to more meetings in person going forward as well as our, as our staff, so looking forward to that. Um, we closely monitor the governor's budget. We're, we're gearing up for the Clean California, where they're anticipating $1.5 billion over three years. Uh, what we plan on doing, we plan on receiving about 41 positions in our district that will be dedicated to litter cleanup and beautification efforts throughout the, um, our district. Um, we'll be hiring about 29 what we call low-entry positions they're creating for maintenance workforce, help people get back in the workforce, provide entry-level jobs uh, to get them into state service as well as a dozen or so um, supervisory and management positions that will allow us, and engineering positions that allow us to create, um, hopefully, beautification projects and, and allocate those resources throughout our district. Um, going into uh, project updates, 
the gap closure rehab project. This is on State Route 58 rehab project. Uh, work schedule for this month are primarily punch list items, uh, sign installation, uh, some additional electrical work. There will be some nighttime closures this week and the upcoming weeks, and we anticipate this project being completed in August towards the end of this summer. Uh, the Bakersfield Freeway Connector Project, this is modifying the State Route 58, State Route 99 interchange. Uh, this project is supposed to be wrapped up in January of 2022. Uh, work continues in progress on this project. Uh, various bridge, drainage, slope, and sound wall work continues. Uh, they are starting to do continuous reinforced concrete pavement or CRCP. Uh, work has started. The State Route 99 uh, Fast Freight Corridor Project, I-5 to US 99 Overcrossing. Uh, continuous reinforced concrete pavement has been completed in Lane 2. Uh, the CRCP is currently curing. Individual slab replacements in Lane 1 should commence in about two weeks after we remove the K-Rail and put in temporary striping. That project is scheduled for completion next month. The State Route 99 from Palm Avenue Overcrossing to Barnsley Canal Bridge. Uh, currently have a closed lane number three, lane number three and four and the shoulder in the southbound direction. CRC pre-work continues in the southbound direction, starting at Olive Drive and working southerly towards the Palm Avenue Bridge Overcrossing. Uh, ramps still remain closed. We anticipate having the ramps open end of this month and you'll see nighttime lane closures in effect and coordinated as needed. This project is supposed to be closed out spring of 2022. The State Route 223 Derby Signal Project is a safety project at the east end of the town of Arvin. Uh, this project was awarded uh, back in March to Griffith Company. Uh, we anticipate start of construction being September of this year. We're waiting for the railroad to do some initial work uh, to install concrete pads, and we expect that work to occur in July. The State Route 184 Sunset Roundabout. Um, this will install roundabout the intersection of State Route 184 and Sunset Drive near Weed Patch. Uh, PG transmission line reloc relocation is scheduled for October. Uh, we expect to coordinate with them and advertise this project in August. The uh, also in Arvin State Route 223-184 roundabout, roundabout project. That project was uh, ready to list in June. We expect to advertise this fall um, to coordinate with utility relocation for that project. Uh, Union Avenue. This is the pedestrian. Uh, Signal at uh, State Route, Union Avenue, State Route 204 and A Street, where we're going to install a, what we call a hawk for a pedestrian signal. Currently in design phase. And that's what we've talked about. We are looking for different avenues to try and accelerate that work um, and hopefully advertise early. Right now it's scheduled for, for February, but we're working with various utility relocations to try and accelerate that to maybe even go out as early as November this year um, to list. Uh, contract is, is at this point scheduled for August. We're hoping to look for opportunities to bring a state furnace signal pole so we can move this, uh, deliver this project up, recognizing it as a safety project. The State Route 204 bike lanes, as I indicated, I'll continue to update you on that. We're still working close with maintenance to keep on top of that project where we'll have our maintenance forces go out there and, and, and stripe an edge line for, for bicycle safety. Um, we are still have our eye on a more holistic project with minor B funds going forward. Um, the commitment I've had for maintenance is we will deliver it this calendar year, but I, really kind of push and try and move it up maybe summer, fall, hopefully before the end of the calendar year. So um, like I said, I'll continue to update you monthly on that. State Route 46 conventional uh, highway project. This was converting a two lane conventional highway to a four lane facility. This is segment 4B in and near Lost Hills, uh, west of the California Aqueduct to about Lost Hills Road. Uh, this had build funding on it. Construction began back in May and currently pg &E overhead relocation is in progress and ongoing. And lastly, State Route 46 gap closure. This is segment 4C. This also converted two-lane conventional highway to a four-lane facility um, on State Route 46 and in near Lost Hills from one mile west of Browns Material Road to the California Aqueduct. That project is currently in design phase and right-of-way acquisition is underway. We expect this project to be ready to list and advertise in July of 2022. And then lastly, I just wanted to share, we've been meeting with a lot of the, the agencies within our district, District 6, and, and we're committed to continue to have those at least on a quarterly basis to kind of listen to our communities and see what needs there are. I know a lot of these small communities have, you know, Main Street, ne Main Street needs. So um, I know our executive management team will continue to do that and look forward to the, getting feedback from you folks so we can kind of stay engaged. I don't want this to be the only venue where we have the opportunity to give feedback or so feel free to reach out to me, you know, during the months or during our quarterly meetings if you have input or, or any assistance from us. With that, that completes my report. Thank you. Thank you so much. Do we have any questions for our District 6?
Representative? I have a comment and a question real quick. Thank you for updating us on the on the Union Avenue uh, bike route and mm -hmm. the, the Hawk. I have a question regarding um, rest stops. The rest stops, were they mostly closed because of COVID? And are, are they going to start along the state routes? Are they going to start opening up again? Or are they just closed because of maintenance? Egg. I, to be honest with you, I'm not sure to answer that question if okay. it was closed. COVID makes sense. Um, I do know at time I've seen them closed down and, and I often wonder why. I know that is the area that I know my maintenance deputy who oversees the rest stops. We've been talking about ways to kind of hopefully improve our rest stops and make them more attractive going forward and looking for more innovative ways to entice people to actually use them. But uh, I'd have to look into that more for you to be quite honest with you. Is there a specific location you were well, interested I'd, in? Well, I'd taken my mom over to the coast this last weekend and that one on 46 by... Um, we're going into Paso Robles area? Um, right before, like, how do you say it? Shalom. Shalom. Yeah, Shalom. Mm -hmm. I've noticed that that one's That's really been closed for a long time. Yeah. I make I make that same drive, and yeah. and that's actually in District 5 um, for us. But um, I've been curious as well because it's been closed for several months. And, I, and, and I, maybe, maybe it is related to COVID, but I'd be happy to look into it with my okay. colleagues in District 5. And there's 5. just been others on 99 that some are open and some aren't. So I was just wondering if that was all COVID-related, they were to start <clears> opening. or Right, and I, and I made that trip. I think within a few weeks of one another. One time I drove by and I was surprised to see it open, and the next time I went by, it was closed yeah. again. So I'm, I'm not sure if it's major. That, that is one of our nicer rest stops. If right. it's the one I'm, I'm picturing. Okay, thank so you. I'll choir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have a, a comment, if that's okay. Please proceed. So, uh, Michael, I offered uh, this afternoon uh, after a call going over the sh uh, shop projects. Caltrans is having difficulty uh, paying for ordering those poles for the Hawk on Union Avenue. Uh, Kern Cog is willing to order those poles for you uh, and pay for them if that will speed up that project as long as we get reimbursed. Absolutely. Under, understood. No, and that's very generous for you. To, and I thank you for that. I do know, and, and, and it's odd that those kind of things hold up projects, like our ability to pay for something when we know it's available. So I, I understand the, the frustration with the bureaucracy. But I'll, I'll follow up with, with Nabila Sunil, the project manager. Um, she, did, she did indicate that you had made that offer. So um, we'll make sure that's explored and vetted opportunity for that because yeah we, we would like to accelerate this project if possible thank you any other questions for mr navarro okay hearing none do we have a report from district nine yes good evening chair and council members uh nice to see you sit, all sitting there together in person many of you uh, good to get back to normal um, I just have a few updates this evening for you. Uh, we are recirculating for a final draft review, our District 9 active transportation plan. So you should have received that via an email. And our deadline for comments on that is July 9th. And this will wrap up that portion of the active transportation plan that's specific to District 9. If for some reason you have yet to receive that, please reach out to me if you're interested. Uh, also, I mentioned last month they were doing a call for innovative concepts and uh, certainly COG staff have picked that up and run with it. Um, so we're going to be collaborating on a submittal that's due on July 16th that entails um, work on the State Route 58 truck climbing lane and some elements we'd love to see occur out there. So we'll see how we go with that. And then finally, just to update on the Rosamond Mojave rehab project that continues um, in construction successfully, and they are anticipating completion of the southbound placement of the continuously reinforced concrete pavement toward the end of next month. And that is uh, the long and short of it this evening for you. Any questions or concerns I, um, I can take, please. Any questions or comments? Okay, hearing none. Chairman. Excuse me. Yeah, Chairman, this is a uh, couch. Um, can I ask about the status on Highway 46? And if Aaron wants to chime in, I'd like to hear about that. Is there is there some sort of uh, discord, I guess, happening between Caltrans, Kern Cog that we need to know about? Uh, I can go over that uh, in my uh, comments now if, if everyone's done with questions for Michael, if that's okay, okay Mr. Chairman. Okay. Sorry, thank you. Go ahead, Aaron. Thank you. 
Good, good evening, Mr. Chairman and board members. Uh, next week, uh, there's a California Transportation Commission on June 23rd and 24th. Uh, we expect a fund estimate for the 2020 R RTIP, which is every two years, Kern Cog is allocated uh, money to uh, implement work that's important to us regionally. Uh, the item that Supervisor Couch mentioned, and Supervisor Couch has been um, a longtime advocate of the project on Route 46. Item 32 on next week's agenda, uh, I became aware of yesterday. And it's an item uh, that is uh, rep Caltrans reporting to the CTC that they have gone over budget um, three and a half million dollars on segment 4A on Route 46, which is the segment at right at um, I-5 and 46, that commercial area there, that completed construction about a year ago. Uh, in 2015, Caltrans entered into an agreement with uh, Kern Cog, and that agreement clearly delineated our roles. Uh, Kern Cog's role was to contribute a fixed amount. Caltrans' role was to deliver the project and any additional funds over and above that agreement that were needed uh, to complete the project. Um, I am uh, going to testify next week, if this is not resolved by next week, that Kern Cog strenuously objects to the collection of, of our future STIP shares that's not consistent with the written agreement that we have that says we, uh, Kern Cog needs to contribute a fixed amount. I've made Assemblymember Fong and Assemblymember Salas aware of that. They uh, plan on writing a letter to the uh, director of Caltrans today or tomorrow. I've also talked to two CTC commissioners and the CTC e executive director about this matter. Um, I hope to get this item resolved quickly. It's not just about the $3.46 million. It's about the relationship that Kern Cog has with, with Caltrans honoring our agreements and it's about uh, future overruns uh, on many other projects. Uh, does that answer your question, uh, Supervisor Couch? Yes, it does. Thank you. Okay. Uh, and any, any board members who uh, would like to attend the CTC meeting next week virtually, um, please let me know. Just a few more meetings uh, that I've uh, attended over the last uh, month. We've talked about the 7th Standard and State Route 43 roundabout, improvements at Truxton Avenue and 99. We've had a State Route 46 monthly status meeting. We also continue to meet on the truck climbing lanes on State Route 58. And I also continue to um, participate in the B3K meetings with the Bakersfield Chamber of Commerce. Subject to, uh, oh, one more thing. I suggest, uh, Mr. Chairman, that we uh, discuss this item 32 uh, of the CTC meeting next week at a closed session next month uh, with, with our attorney. Uh, and certainly, if it is resolved before then, we can, um, we can cancel that or just have a discussion. And I can let you know how and if it was resolved. Very good. Thank you. Any questions for the executive director? I have one real quick. Is Ms. that Park? is that dust up going to delay the 4C now? No. The, okay. the 4B and 4C are, are still on schedule. Okay. This uh, collection of future STIP shares will affect our av ability to deliver future projects like the truck climbing lanes, as, as an example, or the... Uh, Hageman flyover, a and it could potentially affect our ability to pay for 4C. We currently think we have enough money in hand, but uh, the plans are not done yet. Uh, su uh, Supervisor Scribner, are you okay with a uh, closed session, and is there consensus on that uh, for I'm next month? I'm certainly okay with it. I, absent any objections, I think we have consensus. Okay. Does that conclude your the uh, questions for the executive director? Okay, hearing none then, we'll move on. Any member statements? 
Okay, hearing none then, um, we'll adjourn this meeting and then we'll now move on to the current Council of Governments um, agenda and um, we'll, we'll um, keep the same roll call. And so we'll then move on to any public comments. Um, this portion of the meeting is reserved for persons to address the council on any matter not on this agenda but under the jurisdiction of the council. Um, the instructions are the same as for the last meeting. Do we have any speakers that um, would like to make any statements under public comments? Okay, hearing none then, we'll move on to the consent agenda. Um, all items on the consent agenda are considered to be routine and non-controversial by current COG staff and will be approved by one motion if no member of the council or public wishes to comment or ask questions. If comment or discussion is desired by anyone, the item will be removed from the consent agenda and will be considered in the listed sequence with an opportunity for any member of the public to address the council concerning the item before action is taken. So we have items A through G on the consent agenda. Do we have any members of the council or members of the public that would like to pull any of those items for separate consideration? If not, I'll entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda. So moved. This is Reina. Second. I think, I, think I got Couch as a first and Reina as a second, with Lucinovich coming in at a close third. <laughs> okay, roll call vote, please. Lucinovich? Yes. Cryer? Yes. Phil Smith? Yes. Reina? Yes. Albright? Aye. Prout? Yes. Scrivener? Aye. Couch? Yes. And Trujillo? Yes. Thank you. We'll then move on to item number four, congestion management agency. Do we have a report from that agency? Okay, hearing none. Anything on item five, current motors aid authority? Nope. And assuming no meeting reports and so then we'll move on to item number seven executive director's report good Mr. Kimi, please good evening again mr chairman i just have a few quick items on this agenda uh, on june 25th the san joaquin valley policy council council will be holding a meeting followed by the multi-agency working group for housing as a reminder that is supervisor scrivener council member bob smith and mayor kathy prout also on June 29th, the COG directors around the state will be um, meeting remotely. In your folder this evening is a article with our own council member, Orschel Cryer, uh, on the front page of the Imperial Valley Press. Um, a very, very positive article. I've never gotten as many uh, texts and emails about an article um, that Kern COG was mentioned until this article about um, how the state plans to build on what Kern Cog started in 2013. So congratulations to uh, the Kern Cog board um, for taking a, a leap of faith and I investing the uh, motor state money in in debris and obstruction removal. It has been uh, a huge success. Article titled "The Killing of Kern County," where uh, our own Rob Ball was quoted. A, um, a request if you would like. It's optional to update your name, address, and contact information for a confidential roster that we distribute to our elected officials only. Timeline covering June through December and our schedule of cash disbursements uh, for May of 2021. Subject to any of your questions, Mr. Chairman and board members, that concludes my report. Thank you, Mr. Hakimi. Do we have any questions for the executive director? Okay. Hearing none, are there any member statements? Hearing none, and we don't have a closed session today, and so I'll, um, we'll adjourn the meeting. Our next meeting will be on July 15th. We are adjourned.